Hello friends, welcome back to All on a Law. This is a quick pediatrics QPAD. And today we're going to talk about a really very important topic that's intersuspicion. Okay, intersusception. Intersusception is remember is the most common cause of bowel obstruction in a children between two months to five years. Okay, and this is a really very important topic. Okay, guys. So what's intersusception is? And guys, here I'm discussing only important points for USMLE and for MRC PCH examination or any other your country what you call. Uh, entrance examinations okay guys so try to concentrate on this okay so I'm gonna talk about the important classical triad neurological science then important ultrasound findings okay okay this is really very really important most important that's the commonest cause of boil obstruction in children age between two months to five years what's the what you call intersusception just remember intersusception is nothing but is nothing but invagination of one portion of the bowel into its other look oh no, I don't know whether I'm able to draw this or not okay this is what the invagination is okay the proximal portion is usually drawn into the distal portion by peristalsis okay remember this is what the intersection is so remember the Incidence. The incidence is 1 to 4 in 1,000 live births. 1 to 4 per 1,000 live births. Okay. If you ask about the male to female ratio, male to female ratio is 2 is to 1 to 4 is to 1. So it's a very common in male babies. Okay. And the peak incidence, the peak incidence is at the age of 5 to 12 months okay and the age range as I said you that it will be between 2 months to 5 years so commonest age presentation will be 5 to 12 months means within 1 hour 1 year okay and remember this insert, uh, intersusception is the most common cause of acute intestinal obstruction under the A under the 2 years of age also and the most common site is iliocolic 90% idiocolic remember this this can be asked in USMLE exam okay USMLE examination or MRCPCH examination so what's the cause why there is an intersusception in the babies what's the cause remember the most important cause the most common cause is idiopathic that we don't know idiopathic okay and the other causes can be there right rotavirus infection that's we can call it as viral infection hmm? right and there is a lead point a lead point or a focus is thought to be present in the older children okay these lead points can be caused by either Michael's diverticulum polyp okay polyp lymphoma Henarch, Shalin purpura, HSP, and cystic fibrosis. Okay, so these lead points can be caused by Michael's diverticulum, polyp, lymphoma, Henarch, purpura, cystic fibrosis. So remember, in your SMLA or MRCPCH examination, they will give you the history, either the history of Henarch, Shalin purpura, cystic fibrosis, Michael's diverticulum, or ro virus infection like a rotavirus infection. Or sometimes they may not give you any cause just a clinical symptoms and you need to diagnose that that's it okay that's why we talk about the classical trial of intersusception classical trial trial three things three important things tell me one is intermittent look at this just don't remember the only one part remember intermittent intermittent colicky colicky abdominal pain okay here is a 
co not continuous, it's intermittent, it comes and goes, okay? And then we have bilious vomiting, bilious vomiting. Okay? Then we have crunch jelly stool. Current jelly stool. Okay? So these are the important classical tract for intersusception. That's the intermittent colic abdominal pain, then bilious vomiting and current jelly stool. Very important. Try to remember this. Okay, guys. Here I forgot to tell you one important thing. That's uh, intersusception and a link with the what do you call a uh, vaccine that is a for a data that is a rotavirus vaccine led to withdrawal of vaccine from the market because it may lead to this intersusception in the child. Okay. Let's talk about the neurological signs. The patient might experience lethargy and shock-like state. Okay. Right. And the patient can have seizures and apnea. Okay. And remember the important point for USMLD and MRCPC examination. Try to look for right upper quadrant mass. How they define? They define as maybe a sausage shaped, sausage shaped. You know how does it look like? I don't know whether I'm able to draw this baby. Chest, baby chest then we have abdominal okay this is legs this, this is sausage shaped i'm talking about okay guys right so, so ill defined we have then sausage shaped ill defined they can give ill defined okay then we have down sign what's the down sign down sign is the absence of bowel in the right lower quadrant remember not a right upper quadrant it's a right lower quadrant that is a down sign okay so let's move on to the diagnosis that is what abdominal x-ray shows. Abdominal x-ray is a positive of boil gas. Try to google the images positive of boil gas. Okay. And loss of visualization of tip of liver. Tip of liver. Okay, and a target sign. What's the target sign? To concentrate sources of fat density. Target sign. Remember, these are really very important. Two concentric circles of a fat density. Okay, guys? So let's talk about the ultrasound. Ultrasound of abdomen. It's a test of choice, remember. And you can see the donut sign. Donut sign. Single hypoechoic ring with hyperechoic center. Just nothing but a target sign, what we discussed in the x-ray. And there can be a pseudo kidney, pseudo kidney sign, pseudo kidney sign. As if it looks like a kidney, but it's not a kidney. It's a superimposed hypoechoic, okay? And hyperechoic layers because of edematous walls of bowel and area of compressed mucosa. You see, pseudo kidneys, okay? Now let's talk about the barium enema. Barium enema. Okay. It's not useful for iliocolic intersusception, remember. Sorry, ilio ilial ilio ilial intersusception. And this requires ingestion of barium, so more invasive than ultrasound, you know very well. Okay. And the coil spring appears on the evacuation film. Contraindication like if a patient has peritonitis, perforations, or shock, then you cannot use the barium enema, right? So, air enema often provides the same diagnostic and therapeutic benefits of it. barium enema without barium, right? So, let's talk about the treatment. Treatment is just remember try to correct the dehydration, okay? Dehydration very important. Then, NG tube for decompression, hydrostatic reduction. Hydrostatic reduction is really very important, and barium or air enema can be given. Air enema is better, and hydrostatic reduction is better. And then, so you should look for 
and treat dehydration and NG tube for decompressions. What about the recurrence with the radiological reduction is 7 to 10 percent with surgical is a 2 to 5 percent. Okay guys. So thank you so much for watching this video and before ending this I would request you to just google the images of intercession in google and try to look for the x-ray images. Okay guys thank you so much for watching this video take care.